I have never felt like I fit in anywhere. I spent a good portion of my life working the room, trying to figure out where it was safe, figuring out how I could just fit in, blend in, or just find a place. And I found this to be specifically true in my professional career. I spent so much energy and time holding back who I was, what I felt, what I thought, just so I could be taken seriously. After 14 years of being in a corporate middle management position where I had the glorious job of protecting the creative process, I got to hold space for creatives to do what they did best, which was be brilliant, be creative. Me and my team did this through managing. We managed the hell out of it. I managed up. I managed my managers. I managed their managers. I managed all around me expectations, peers, relationships. I was frequently called in to be the peacemaker because send Jen in, she'll get it done. All the while, I was dealing with my own challenges of not fitting in. It was really hard. I was keeping back a huge portion of myself just to be successful. And I kept thinking, this cannot be the way we do work. We have to be able to work differently with each other. But you know what? I was damn good at it. <laughs> I was a great soldier. I did what I was told. I didn't ask questions, got the mission done. But you know what? There is no joy in driving someone else's mission. I thought, when I get the big office, I'm going to be so happy. I got promoted time and time again. And when I finally hit that six-figure salary that I always wanted, I thought, this is it, Jen, you are going to be happy. But I wasn't. And when I stopped and examined all the ways that I had held back and kept the majority of this person out of the picture, I was miserable, just absolutely miserable. I'd like to tell you all that I did something super fearless at that point, like flip my desk and like, you know, peace out and left the room, but I didn't. I hung out, I did my job, I got it done. Well, guess what? I got laid off. <laughs> yeah, a uh, pandemic forced me to focus and forced me to change. Uh, I don't have to recap that whole situation to you guys. You were there. It was chaos. People were losing their jobs, their lives, their livelihoods at such an alarming rate. My company did a ton of layoffs. So did a ton of other companies. My whole department got canned. And there was no toilet paper, so that really sucked. <laughs> um, but you know what? The pandemic sparked this surge of entrepreneurship. And people were starting to help themselves. They had you know, other options but to go out there and try to make a living a different way. What emerged? was a whole bunch of side hustles. Um, everybody's got one now. Uh, and 5.4 million small business applications were filed in 2021. I'm super proud to say I was one of those people. Um, being a Gen Xer and a woman, I am that statistic. And I'm damn proud of it. But it took me so long to get there. <laughs> I mean, it just it was months and months of just being down for the count. Um, and I just remember that day sitting there with my cocktail after I got let go thinking, oh my God, I'm so relieved. I don't have to go in there and fake it tomorrow. But at the same time, I'm like, what the hell am I going to do with the rest of my life? I thought I was going to be a lifer there. Well, inspiration comes from the most unbelievable places sometimes. And a few months later, I found myself failing miserably at insurance sales. I mean, just sucked terribly. <laughs> I was probably the worst salesperson. I mean, I was great at building connections. I could go in there and talk to people, no problem. But I couldn't close a freaking door. And I just don't have a problem taking no for an answer. I'd like help people through things and go, gosh, that was a great conversation. And they're like, Jen, you're the most helpful insurance person I've ever met. Like, thanks, I'll talk to you next week when I bug you again. Um, and I stayed in that job for a lot longer than I should have. And the reason why was that company was amazing. They put a focus on self-development and growth at the same level as sales numbers. And there were days when I had nothing better to report to my team than I had a personal breakthrough yesterday and I think I'm done like 
having a nervous breakdown. They're like, Jen, that's amazing. And they cheered for me. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't make any money, but it's cool. <laughs> but here's the thing, like that company really did put that validation back for me that the way I had led my team in the past was totally right. It was honest, it was real. I always thought that you put effort and um, attention to the individual, the team gets stronger, and that's what's best for the company. Not the bottom line drives how you treat people. And this company really did validate that for me. I always felt like if you show up to the table as the best version of you, you're going to do great things, and the people around you will be inspired to do great things. And I stayed there for a long time because my soul was starving for that. I just, I needed that so bad and I didn't realize it until I was there. Plus the insurance model was really, really interesting to me. Like we were a team of individual, independent insurance agency owners. No one was the boss of me. If I didn't make my sales numbers, that was my ass. But they were supportive. We all came together. We did business because nobody understood better what we were going through than each other. And I was a small business owner at that point, and I didn't even realize it. It was the coolest thing. So after months and months and months of growth, self-development, and with a focus on healing my trauma, and I'm going to pause there and just say how important it is to deal with your trauma when you're trying to make big change in your life. I realized three really huge things. The first, I am a magnificent, sparkly weirdo. <laughs> and I'm done hiding it. And honestly, I like it a lot. My moxie, my grit, my resilience, the way I show up to do business every day, that is my strength and that is my superpower. And I will not apologize for it anymore. Second, there's power in connection. When a team is unified behind core value, belief, mission, and purpose, you can do unbelievable things. I saw glimmers of this in corporate when I was leading my team. You can be unstoppable. Third, there is a better way to work, to do business honestly, fairly, authentically, and with heart, with true collaboration, and still have time to have joy and balance in your life. My time spent in corporate showed me all the ways I didn't want to work, I didn't want to do business, and it showed me who I didn't want to be and who, how I didn't want to treat people. That complex, top-down organizational structure with super bad political culture damaged people at the individual level, and because of this, the team suffered. And I can't go back to that, and I don't want people to go through that. It was terrible. I know it's not that way for everybody, but I just, I don't want that for anybody. But my time spent failing miserably as an insurance salesperson taught me the value of being a good leader, of leaning on people for support, of being vulnerable. And the things I was instinctually doing were honest and good and right. And this is all the stuff that would later become the foundation for the culture and business model that I wanted to create for myself. So here it is. <laughs> I am creating a place for freelancers, for remote workers, for small business owners, for entrepreneurs who are working by themselves to come together and get shit done. Collectives, consortiums, and co-ops benefit from having a unified mission, even a, um, just a, guiding, a set of guiding laws that help them do business together but still maintain their individuality and their separateness as businesses. You don't have to sell out or sacrifice who you're going to be to be a part of this. You get to function as a unit and have a team dynamic around you for support, and the inner circle can become that guiding, governing body, like the upline in insurance sales, to provide mentorship and guidance and growth. I want to build a co-op of us, for us, by us people like me who really want to do business honestly and still have balance. Freelancers benefit from this because they crave structure. It's, it's what drives them to corporate in the first place. But when you get there, there's a lack of 
advocacy and true growth. Everything you are taught or done or do is in support of that bottom line. With this co-op, you will get to self-manage, yet work as a team. Any self-development that happens comes from your peers, from the people around you going through the same shit you're going through. Small business owners can benefit because let's face it, the talent struggle's real. When you're looking to hire good help, it's hard. Big companies benefit from having HR departments or staffing agencies to do that work for them. And honestly, they just attract a better talent pool because everybody wants to make the big paycheck. A community or collective of people who just are not bound by roles or departments is a way that you can have access to a virtual bench of workers ready to get hands on with your projects. It's also not limited to siloed departments or that crazy overhead that costs from you know, starting a big company. There are over 33 million small businesses in the United States. Can you imagine what we could accomplish if we all came together and figured out how to work better as a group? If we focused on helping people and lifting each other up and doing better for ourselves and everybody else, it could be amazing. Eight out of 10 small business owners are run by a single owner and they have zero employees. That's a lot of us. But we employ 46% of the entire US worker population, which is quite amazing. So when you think about it, our success is not only vital to us, it's vital to the economy. And if we can figure out a way to do this well together, I just, I can't imagine what we could do. And I believe there's enough heart-centered business owners out there like yourselves, like myself, who just wanna work better and be happy. Now, I didn't realize this is where I was headed when I was thinking back then, God, you know, there has to be a better way to do this. I can't believe this is what we do every day. I just wanted to be a really good employee, to fit in, to do my job, to collect my paycheck, to get promoted. But I had to really examine that when I got laid off. And I asked myself what I truly needed financially and otherwise. And of course, it came to the conclusion, there, ha there is a better way. And I thought, why not me? Why not now? I have so many connections. I've connected with so many people in my life. That's precious. And I thought about this and I thought, I can make a living and be selective. I can choose who I exchange energy with and that's okay. And I started my business with this in mind. So I challenge each and every one of you to take a pause. Look at how you're working, where you're working, who you're working with, who you are exchanging energy with. And I want you to think about it and maybe take on a different mindset. What do you need? What do you want? Who do you want to work with? And do you have the support to do all the things you dreamed of doing when you started your small business, whether it was yesterday or 10 years ago? Do you have that support? Can you grow? And if you come up dissatisfied with any of your answers, or you're just an unapologetic, sparkly weirdo who hasn't found their tribe, come find me. Let's build something incredible together. Because I do believe that yes, there is a better way.